What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today I'm going to show you how to use data tables. This is a generic episode for Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. We're going to be using data tables in the third person tutorial series today, but you do not need any prior experience with the series or anything like that. If you do want to catch up on the series beforehand to show to see all the cool stuff that we've been doing, then I'll leave a link in this side card right here to the very first episode of the third person tutorial series, as well as the entire playlist. Otherwise, we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you all the cool stuff that we can do with data tables. This is going to be the very, very basic introductory episode. In the next third person tutorial series, we will go over actually using this system with everything we've created, because it can be very, very powerful, especially the way we've set it up. But essentially a data table is just a file that has a list of data, just like an Excel sheet, and you can actually import an Excel sheet or a CSV file to get this data filled out. For now, we're going to create everything within the engine. Okay, so first things first, data tables require a structure to be created. So we already have an F weapon class in our case, or default weapon class in our case, and that's okay. We're going to leave that alone, but we will transfer everything to a structure in the blueprint. That way we just have the variables to go off of. So if we go to add new blueprints, structure, and then call it whatever you want. Structures usually start with F, so I call it F weapon. You'll get to a screen that looks like this, but you won't have any of these in here. You can click new variable to add a row. And we're going to make all of these different, all these variables in our structure. This is a structure. So just like a code structure, if you're familiar, it's basically an overarching, it's a class essentially that has all these variables in it. We need to make the variables represent what the data table needs to know. So the first thing that it needs to know is the name of the weapon, potentially the level requirement of the weapon, the damage that the weapon does, like base damage before modifiers, speed that the weapon has before, you know, again, base speed before modifiers, the type of weapon, in our case is like sword, dagger, axe, it helps determine our animation that we will use when we are holding that weapon. And then I actually have a class to spawn as well, which is an actor reference. So most of these are pretty easy string, integer, float, float, e-weapon type. Again, this is an enum that I have that we set up in the series that has these different types so that we can determine potentially uh, different attack states or animations while holding and attacking with them and perhaps for organizational purposes. So you can just search for any enum you have. It should come up as long as it's blueprint type. But otherwise, um, the, the weird one here might be the actor reference that's purple here. And that's because this isn't actually an actor reference like we're used to seeing. This is an actor class reference. So type in actor and hover over it and you'll get this huge comment. But you see if you hover over it, you get these four options. You're going to want to go to the class reference. The difference here is the object reference you know tries to hold all the data that an object of type actor has but what we really want to do is get the class reference so that we know what class the actor is and this is important because if we have a blueprint class for every weapon or at least for each type of weapon we can go ahead and spawn that class at the appropriate time without needing all the data that the actor has you can also use these soft references as well, and we very, very well may switch to them down the line. But for now, let's not get into any of that. Let's just work with the class reference. And now this is the class to spawn. You can set the default values for all these if you'd like. However, honestly, I usually just leave them blank. Then what we need to do is make our data table. So we can add new miscellaneous and go to data table. There's also a composite data table, which is a data table that has other data tables in it. We don't want that right now. We just want the data table. 
when you go to make it, it's going to ask you to pick the structure. You, you're basically picking the structure we just created. For some reason, there's always two for me. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is the standard, but you can see that there's two F weapons and then two of my other structures. Don't worry about that. I don't think you can pick the wrong one. Whatever one you pick should work. So I think it's just a little bug on Unreal side. But just go ahead and pick the name that matches up. So F weapon and then hit OK. And I hit the X and it still created it, which is pretty wild. But if I get rid of this, now here's my weapon data table. That's what I called it. If I go into that, you can see that you can set the values for each row. So here's your row editor. This little plus will add a new row. This X will delete that row. And then this is basically the row name here. Okay, so you can either click on the row itself to edit it or click on this right here to edit it. So to get started, go ahead and add a few rows. If you have a certain number of weapons or equipment or whatever you're using this for right off the bat, then you can go ahead and just add as many as you need. And here's where you can choose the row name. I leave the row name as the index because as someone who's used to working with you know primary keys and different things like that at work it's it's good to have an index or an id that you can actually use and so unreal will automatically put this other one here you can also put an id in the structure if you want i heavily considered that but i don't really think it's necessary when you have this acting as the id i don't see any other benefits currently so i just named them zero but you can name them if you'd like. You don't have to do ID. You could name them like, uh, I don't know, Longsword or something for another one. And the name could be the identifier. I'm going to keep them as ID because I'm going to want to be able to search for a specific one that we choose or that we pick up. That's going to have an ID attached to it and find it. If I change the name, I don't necessarily want to have to change the name in here. So I'm going to delete this row. Actually, we can use this row as the example instead of overwriting everything. So we can go ahead and type in here whatever we want. So the name would be Longsword. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Lava. <laughs> like something fancy, right? And that's the name of your weapon. Level requirement could be 5. So you can only use this weapon if you're level 5 or above. Base damage would be... Mm, like seven base speed would be 1.5 type it is going to be a type sword and class to spawn and then if i had it it would have to be but i only have sword bp so but if i had a different type for it like i normally would if it was a weapon i was spawning i could spawn it or i could spawn a class reference and pass parameters to it based on other things in the structure, and then I would get the proper data from that. If I remove this, then I'm back to where I was. You can see that the class to spawn is the blueprint type, the blueprint class. So we're good to go. Now all we have to do is actually utilize this data table. There's a ton of ways we can do this. Like I said, if we set up an ID on our weapon, we could search for the specific row. Since I don't want to get into the specifics of the third person tutorial today, and that will be covered in the next episode for how we, we use it, then I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to directly access this and show you how useful it can be. But again, in the next episode for the third person tutorial series, I will be actually using weapon IDs to get the correct weapon. And we can do it for equipment too, and spawning that item when we go through our inventory. But for now, in begin play, don't worry about this setup input actions. This is something that I've done throughout the series, but everything after it is what I'm doing to spawn and attach a weapon. We do have a system in place currently to go through the inventory. But right now, I'm just going to be spawning a weapon and attaching it to the player at begin play. So you can see if I don't do this, then my character spawns with just his fists out. I have no weapon equipped or attached. Now, when I do do this, I spawn with the sword, and I can switch this. 
go to the axe, which happens to be facing the wrong way because I haven't rotated it, or I can go to the dagger. Okay, let's see how this works. There's something you can do called get data table row, and you can essentially just retrieve a value from a data table with the row. If we had the identifier, the ID from the weapon, then we would pass this in as opposed to picking it manually, but the, the process is basically the same. So we get data table row, and then you go ahead and select the data table you want. I only have one, so it's very easy for me. And then for row name, I pick the row that I want. It determines if the row is found or not. If it's not found, you may want to return an error or just not do anything. But if it is found, then you can perform better logic. What I like to do is drag off out row and break it. Expand upon it if needed. And grab the class to spawn to determine what actor we're going to be spawning. Spawn actor from class. It will automatically put in the class reference if you drag off of it. Then you do need to spawn transform. Um, since this is going to be spawning and added to our character's hand, I go ahead and use the actor transform of the character we're in. See, this is my character. So getting actor transform gets the center of this character. It's good enough for now since we're going to be spawning it. So get actor transform. If you want to see that, just to be completely safe, it is this one right here. And then you can pass that in. Now, the logic I'm doing up here, we're casting to our base class because we don't, when you take a class reference, it does know what type of class it is. Like it knows that, okay, it's sword BP, whatever. However, when you're in the blueprint like this, it only knows that's an actor class reference. It doesn't know the class. So you can't just cast to the specific type. Well, you can, you could cast the sword BP and all that, but if it fails, then you'd have to cast to the other ones to make it work. If you just cast to a parent BP or, or parent code class, such as base weapon, then no matter what weapon it is, it will work. But then it will transfer the data into this class that it's casting to. So all we have to do that is we already have a current weapon, but it's not required that you do this. This is something that I'm doing because it works in the series. And also I wanted to show you that I think it's important. You can go ahead and set a variable off this so you can set your current weapon to be a sword if you want, quite literally. Uh, set current weapon. And now the character is holding this weapon. Okay, so we've gone from grabbing data from a data table to spawning an actor with that information to casting to the proper type to setting it to the type our character is using. I'm going to delete all the stuff we added because it's getting a little much. But you can see it all right here. The last thing we have to do is now we have this class. And by the way, you don't need the variable. If you don't have the system set up, don't worry about it. I'm just showing you that you can do that. But what you do need to do is attach it to the correct spot on your character if you want to use it like we are using it here. That way you can see it. If you don't want to attach, then just print a string or something just to show you what the value is so that you know it's working. But if you want to attach, it's very simple. We grab our character's mesh, just like this. Attach to component. There we go. So if you drag off of the mesh and type attach to component, that's the easiest way to do it. You can do it other ways, but it doesn't really matter. You can go off of your casted item or your current weapon like I'm doing here. It doesn't matter. And now you're attaching to the component, so you can configure all the logic. I won't bore you with this stuff, because this is stuff that's specific to this series, but we have a socket on our character called Weapon Socket. And I can show you really quickly. If I go to my skeleton, I have it on, on my right hand. I have this Weapon Socket right here. So I can attach a weapon to this socket. Okay, and so since I've done that, I put the rules to snap the target just so it sits in there, and there you go. 
If I delete these and just leave it as is, you can see I spawn my items. And all this data to retrieve the weapon I'm getting and all comes from the data table. That's how useful data tables are. That was hard-coded information. Imagine you have an inventory and the inventory items have an ID. And as soon as you click the button, it searches the data table for the ID and spawns the item with all that information. Again, it's the same for it's the same for equipment, it's the same for items, it's the same for anything that you can see use for it. We will definitely be using it for quests. We can fill out the quest information in the data table as well. So it's very, very useful. All right, guys, and that's about it for now. We will do another data table episode, uh, another generic one like this, and we'll import Excel files because I think that's also useful. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's more so if you have multiple people working on it or someone who doesn't necessarily want to touch the data table in Unreal. I still think it's important to cover so you know and if you're more familiar with it. Alright guys, so that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed and this helped you learn about data tables, please subscribe. It does more for me and the channel than anything else you can do and it's completely free. If you had any issues with this episode or any of my episodes, feel free to join the Discord community and we'll be happy to talk to you and figure things out. And I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for all the love and support you guys have given me. I really, really appreciate it, and I can't wait to see what goes on in the future. I've also added two documents that you can edit or make suggestions to on Google Drive. So if you want to see all the episodes that I plan on coming out with in the future, and add or edit those, let me know what you think. I'll leave them in the description. Thanks again, guys. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.